Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Anna. And we're two sisters who love handcrafting and figuring things out. Saturday, March 2nd. It is a rainy, gloomy day here in Northern California, and this is episode 45 of The Curious Crafters. Mm -hmm. We were just thinking, wow, 45. Yeah. We're so happy you're here, and hi, hi, hi. Yeah, we're welcome. Having a, I'm having a really relaxing Saturday. How about you? Yeah, oh, I'm having a great Saturday. Um, welcome, everybody. We're getting a little rain, but right now we're about four hours from the Tahoe area, and they got slammed with the blizzard. Like I-80 goes through there, which is a really huge road and it's closed. And oh, do you see that article? Like there's some people like in their cars stuck. Can't even anyway. imagine. Whew. So everybody's watching that story. Yeah. Um, all right. So welcome. We have a lot of things planned for you. We're going to start, of course, with a little chit chat and we have a fun toast today. We're going to share what we're wearing. We are going to show off some fully finished objects. Super excited about those. And then we have a bunch of them. A bunch of them. We also have finishes, whips, plans, a couple shared supplies. We're always a little bit light on our shared supplies, but that's the way. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. We got plenty. We have plenty. We have plenty. We and you'll see I dropped some cash at the stationery stores, the gift okay. shops. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have some, you're going to show some shared supplies that are not really shared supplies. Right. And then let's see, of course, we'll end up with our thumbs up. So let's, let's, let's go. Now, before we do anything, I don't know if anybody else... I think it was yesterday on Instagram, I saw Jacob's new release and it's called um, Hold On To Your Socks and it's an 18th century knitting sampler. So let me show, I, I've already purchased it. I was like right in there purchasing it. The minute I saw it, I was like, wow. Yeah, so here is the design. I might do it in red too. I know. It is to me, unusual yet familiar it mixes it's kind of like like a Quaker and that it has geometric but then also organic and Carmen of cardamom pins she posted on Instagram and she's like hmm what if we also knit some socks using some of the motifs and I'm like only have to ask once only have to ask once so I think that's really an interesting idea with this like wouldn't it be fun to stitch it but then also pull out some of those motifs and knit a pair of socks. To me, I, I like anything that's collage-like and this is collage-like oh, for me. Yeah. So it has sort of like the grounded straight line at the bottom and then all this movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My timer's going off. Done. I don't know what it was timing. <laughs> uh, now, at first I thought, oh, I'm gonna start that right away, but I actually have so many fun things going right now. And when I looked at the size, the, it's a pretty large piece. So it's 244 stitches oh. wide and 331 Oh, that high. is big. So it's pretty big. So my current plan is it's my enticement that when I finish Fruits of Plenty, I'm going to start this. Oh, that's so disciplined. I thought yeah. you were going to say like summertime or something. Oh, who knows? I, and that's just my plan, right? It can change. Oop, hello. Um, I might though play around a little bit with knitting a pair of socks before that, pulling in those motifs. Again, you could imagine some of the geometric along your cuff and then a floral maybe coming down the side. And what about this for a, oopsie, for a bowl full of baskets? Oh, uh, Anna, I was thinking about that too. I have been seeing on several Nashville releases too, I've seen bowl full of baskets. Okay, we'll start uh, bookmarking them for okay. me. Okay, wait, which one? Are you? Oh, this one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, really any of, any of those. So, anyway, it was just like, an awesome one. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob, for continuing. I know um, also 
Carmen of Cardamom Pins is starting the hashtag Jacob Sleeper Style. And at first I'm like, could I do this instead? But I'm like, no, Carolyn, that's not the point. It's not a sleeper. Everyone's probably gonna be really excited about it. Mm -hmm. We had some, uh, at least one question from a commenter about what sleeper means, and it, it probably means something a little bit different, but it's either one of the older charts that you haven't seen on Instagram feeds recently mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. that's a new discovery for you. So sort of the idea of sort of digging deep into mm -hmm. his library of charts mm -hmm. and giving it a little like attention. Mm -hmm. I know I was also thinking of it a little bit like, this is an incredible chart. Like, why haven't more people stitched it? Or why haven't we seen more people stitched exactly. it? Exactly, we don't I know, it right? Too. Right. And so I think it's whatever you interpret it to be. Or maybe sure. it could be a sleeper, that one that you picked and it's been in your stash, but you haven't stitched it yet, so it's been sleeping away. So you're sort of waking it up. You're waking it up, right. Okay. I, I sometimes when I do like that, I'm waking it up. I'm like, <laughs> yes, I am a sixth grade teacher. <laughs> I know. Right now I'm teaching some computer science concepts at school and I was acting out something about iteration, which is looping and repeating something. And you just got to like ham it up because you've got to give them something concrete to, to bear. And that some of them were like, like laughing or like, look what she's doing. But they remember. Right. Right. Plus, if we're a little silly, it gives them permission to be mm -hmm. a little silly. Agreed. One of our, this is like totally off topic, but I'll share it. One of our colleagues brought in some, like his kid's room was like overflowing with stuffed animals. He has $2. So he just cleared out and brought some stuffed animals. And we have like a little like reading nook library and he just put them in there. Oh, good they idea. have taken on a world of their own. They have names, people, they are in all parts of personality games. I, there's one particular, it's this hamster that if you talk at it, it repeats what you say. And the oh, teachers, gosh. it's so annoying to the teachers. We now have this thing that I, every, at lunchtime I hide it someplace and then they have to find it. <laughs> and for the teachers were like, as long as we don't need to listen to it over lunch, the hamster. Anyway. Every time something like that happens at school, I, I think it's a great reminder for those of us who spend time with middle schoolers, that especially sixth graders still have a childlike piece mm -hmm. of them. And I feel like our culture doesn't always remember that. And, and it's like really just, it's just play. So, okay, side note, but that's just been really fun. I, I might steal that idea. Yeah, it was fun. And plus my colleague was like, man, we had so many. It was just like, ch -ch 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 -ch. Mm -hmm. All right, so we had a few things for comments. You already talked about, what was the one thing that you just talked about? Oh, the sleeper. The sleeper, Wait okay. Okay, uh, <laughs> am I on? Yeah. <laughs> Some people were asking about uh, what we've been calling our tile finishes. Can you just hold up what we mean yeah. by a tile? Mm -hmm. And really, they we, we learned how to do this by watching the Vana Pfeiffer flat fold video. This is just the front of the flat fold mm -hmm. and without the connecting ribbon mm -hmm. and the back to mm -hmm. make it sort of a triangular stand, stand on its mm -hmm. own kind of thing. So that's what we're following. Have you tweaked it at all? Or are you still using pretty much what we learned from Vana? Oh, I'm using what we learned from Vana. I am too. Yeah. I'd say the one thing I tweaked is on some of these, I'm just, instead of putting a second board with oh, fabric yes. on the back, I've just been putting um, wool. And that's been working really well because I can cut it and just dab a little glue. But some of them, I will put a fabric board on the back, in which case it, it's just like the front of a flat fold. Oh yeah, the Vana, that was classic. We also had questions about where did Carolyn get the mm -hmm. wooden stands that she's using? Yeah. And well, you, you want to go yeah, for I'm yourself? Gonna show them. Yeah, I, w I just really was a good reminder that whenever we show something to make sure we're really clear and put it in the show notes. I want to try to get better at that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to show you a selection. All of these, I've ordered some from a variety of different places on Etsy. All of these come from Coon Stained Glass. And also if you go to Etsy and search wooden or whatever display for stained glass, you're going to get something that is appropriate. And why you want it is the stained glass has a thicker groove here to put a piece in. If Compared you, to something that was being sold for a photograph Like or for something. a photo, like if you got a wood stand, and what it made me think to use these initially because we ha I have like a nice wood stand that can put a photo in. And then Joan gave us the calendars and it came with a wood stand that was thicker. Mm. Remember for that? Mm -hmm. um, so you need thick enough groove there to put your piece in. So I'm just gonna show you, these are three variations that I've all gotten from Kuhn Stained Glass. This is two inch wide and it's a little bit wider in the back. I think it's like this because for stained glass, some people have candles on the back to shine ah. through the stained glass. But I just like that change of size. It's a little bit low. I'll hold that. Okay. Um, this one is also two inch, but it's a higher version. 
So I kind of just like having, you know, different heights when you're putting them together. It does look, I like that. And then this one, I think this is probably maybe four inches and it just has a little bit of, I don't know. Almost looks like molding or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just a little bit wider. And I think they make them up to like 10 inches wide. Um, so you can get different widths. And it, they just sell this, this particular place, just this one stain, but I'm like, now, now I'm taking it next level. I'm like, we could paint these. And um, you could paint put like a whitewash on them, all kinds of things. So for me, this is just really versatile. You can stand these up all different places. And they're very reasonably them. priced, they're right? Reasonably priced, reasonably priced, absolutely. So that's where we got mine, Coon stained glass, but search on Etsy, they have lots of other options as well. And Carolyn, Carolyn's corners when she makes these tiles are, are very sharp and and people have asked about that. Thank you, Anna. And, I mean, that's not the end all, but for those people who are interested in achieving that kind of finish, people are requesting that mm -hmm. Carolyn make a video tutorial and you're mm -hmm. up for it, right? I'm totally up for it. Yep, I'm gonna be finishing. I'll show you the piece um, later in the video that I finished and I'm gonna finish that as the tile and I'll just, I'll do a, a little tutorial. Demo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for doing that. I'm gonna, you're I want to watch it too. It, it might end up being a series of photos that then I voice over as a video. Um, we'll see how it goes. Or if we want to do it together, let me know. Oh, that could be fun. Okay, so we will we will do that. Awesome. Is that the main things from our comments? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, just what have we been up to? So this has been, it's been three weeks since we released our last video. Both Anna and I were traveling to the East Coast for a week. Um, we had a February break off of school. We have that every year, it's fantastic. And I went to um, Hudson Valley in New York to visit my younger son's family. They have two girls, so my two granddaughters. One will turn four in May and the one will turn two in April. So they're about to flip to four and two. And I hadn't seen them um, since August. So it was fantastic. We did a couple of um, special things like we went to New York City for a day and went into the Met and went to a playground in Central Park. Mm. We went ice skating, rode a carousel. So we did some sort of fun extra things, but a lot of the time was just hanging out, going to the park. Their um, school was also off for the week. So it was also nice having another adult as the two parents had to kind of work. It was also great, the, the great timing. So just fantastic. How about you, Anna? And I split my week. I was the first half of the week, I was in the Washington, D.C. area where my daughter and her family lives. And so I saw my granddaughter, toddler E, and just lots of fun there. One little memory I have is I was working on, I learned how to use Max Stitch over vacation. Oh, good. And oh, I was good. charting an alphabet and I had printed out something and sh she was next to me coloring. She's very interested in letters right now. She was, in, she was coloring a printout <laughs> of the letters, of the alphabet letters and just, you know, saying their names. Do you have a photo we can put in? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I think the one you sent was maybe just the back of her head. If we have a photo, we'll put it in here. And then I took the train up to the Philadelphia area where our sister Joan and her family lives. And Joan, uh, we, we meant to make a little video and we just never got around to it. She is not cross-stitching right now, but she's doing one of those do something every day kind of challenges mm. where she has these squares of fabric and she's stitching. She was doing all this rice stitch on the square the week that I was there. And she's uh, sometimes sewing on smaller pieces of fabric. Sometimes there's, she's stamped an image on those fabrics. So she's making like these little collages out of squares. And I don't, I don't know if they're gonna become a quilt or what, but and, it was really fun to watch And is it like, if she's stitching on the square, is it just the fabric or is she already layered it into like a quilt sandwich? Just the fabric. Just the fabric. So okay. she has this little wooden cigar box of goodies. And she says she's not even necessarily like finishing one square and then moving to the next square. She's sort of keeping them in a stack and when mm. she opens it up, she might think, oh, I'm going to add this to this, or it, it was really fun to watch. Okay, so I, and I, I regret not having something to show everybody. because And was, she's not um, like doing a square a day. She's just spending some time working on that. I think day. she said something at least 15 minutes a day. So mm. sometimes maybe after dinner, she just kind of Interesting. tries to put some stitches on fabric. Did she say what inspired her to do that? I think there is an artist on Instagram who is leading this initiative or has done something similar. She saw the idea somewhere. Okay, well, we'll have to, she's, gonna yeah, pay, we'll get the she's coming out to visit in a few weeks. 
right? It's going to be two weeks or so. So hopefully she'll bring it and ah. we can maybe um, have her in our next video. There we go. Second chance. Yeah. Second chance. That actually sounds really interesting. Very, very appealing. Awesome. Okay. So it's time to toast and we're going to toast uh, um, Becky of Becky's House of Sewing. And she, if you don't watch her, go over and take a a look at her. She lives in North Carolina. She does, she comes from a really rich heritage of crafters. So her mother crafts, her grandmother crafts, her, her aunts craft. They have a Wednesday crafting circle that they all craft um, together. And she quilts, she sews, she cross stitches, she does it all. And she's recently sort of gotten into, well, maybe I'd like to make project bags and sell them. And she has a hilarious um, adventure with zippers. And so just go watch and we'll find out about her zippers and we'll, and we'll show you a little bit from zippers. So, and she was like, I have a few project bags I made here. Just email me if you would like one. So I sent her an email and I'm like, yeah, I'd love one. And so she emailed back and said, well, what would, what, you know, what would you like? Was there fabric you like? And, and since she was having just such an adventure experiment, I'm like, you just go for it. Make something that you think was fun, experiment, try something new, um, go for it. And we agreed upon the price and everything. And then Anna's like, yeah, I'm into it on this. So literally while we were filming our last fil uh, floss tube, I saw a mailman walk. I can see our front door from here. And I went to get the package once we were done filming. It, these were the bags from Becky. So the timing was we, so funny. <laughs> they've been sitting here for three weeks and we're like, we can't use them until we show them. And she sent us two, but she didn't clearly label who was for whom. So she also said, I sort of have an idea, but I want to see what you did. So um, we love them both, but we just finally decided which one. So I'll show you mine. So she quilted and stitched that. And then the back has this fantastic bird fabric on it. And she was laughing. She goes, I ended up making you a bath bag to hold your baths. Really, really nice zippers and, and kind of fun cork fabric inside. And she did, these have a, like a binding around the outside, which is really nice. She also features, she puts a foam in here. So it's really sturdy, but still feels like soft. Supple, and kind of. Yeah. Supple, supple's a great word. So mm -hmm. this is mine. And then Annie, you wanna show yours? This is mine. The mushrooms drew me in. She called them a bat because it may be hard to tell because you may not be able to see the scale, but this mm -hmm. is larger than the Elizabeth Ann can stitch bag that, mm -hmm. that Carolyn and I usually it make. It might be a similar width, maybe a little wider, um, but definitely taller. We'll have to compare. Well, when we get to when we get down into our, our layers for our whips, when we pull them out. So zipper is really, really nice. Same, like, like it looks like cork on the inside. They're fabulous. Mm -hmm. So fabulous. Becky knocked it out of the park. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And now you have to tell us what you, who yeah. you had in mind. We had such a hard time. We almost decided to just put them behind our, our backs uh -huh. and just choose one that way. But we okay. finally went because Anna is, is stitching a piece right now with mushrooms on it. And she's going like, oh, the mushrooms. And I'm like, well, we both love birds. So I'm like, oh, birds. Mm -hmm. So we just went um, this way. So Becky is starting to maybe think about selling her bags. So you can go check them out um, right now, just through email. I know two videos ago, her last video was about QuiltCom, which she had that great opportunity to go to. Great video if you want a good recap of QuiltCom. And at the end, fantastic con, right? quilt con oh excuse me quilt con mm -hmm. the end a fantastic montage of the quilts and oh, beautiful she had yet. taken a picture of the placard with the quilter's name and their description and then she'd sew the quilt so you can see who has done each quilt really really great but the one before that she shows some bags um, that she made so also in our pack so <laughs> to be more talk about so the she zipper. very generously she it, you'll see when you go back a few videos that she purchased huge cones of, of si zipper, zipper tape, tape I zipper guess. Tape. Like but then when she started to use them or mess with them, she realized that the pulls were a size that is not easily attainable. Mm -hmm. So she ordered a bunch of different things and she finally found pulls that fit and matched colors and everything. Amazing. It's really interesting to hear that story. So she, um, I'll be able to use some of the her zipper tape mm -hmm. bags that I make. Mm -hmm. And then these came in yeah. a bag sewn by her mother, yeah. who is a quilter. And just amazing. It and was such an amazing package. So Becky, thank you so thank much. You. One, one of the things I love about watching Becky, first of all, I literally laugh out loud multiple times. 
She's very funny. And often it's just like, Becky, it's just like the little things you say sometimes that just really um, crack me up. And then um, I love that, like she really like, I love hearing her thinking about things. Like even the process of like, how do you go about figuring out what zipper balls work with the zippers? I mean, she's like super creative and just, I love hearing all that that thinking, so. I like hearing that thinking too. Um, also, also feeling really honored because she has this thing that I love. I'm totally copying her. It's called the, I like, I want to stitch with you bucket list. So it's just people that she wants someday in her life to sit down and have a stitch with them. And we're on her list now. So Becky. I didn't know that. Yeah, you're on my, our, my list too, oh, so. Yeah. She's, she's on the East Coast, we're on the West Coast, but I bet sometime we're maybe traveling on the East Coast or something, it's it's gonna work out. You just never, yes. It's gonna work out, okay. So, um, Becky. I need to refill my glass, okay. excuse me, just a second. Okay. Just here's to you and your craftiness and your sense of humor and your willingness to just tell us what you're up to. So, um, Toast and Becky. Toast and Becky. And, and, and I our think BAP. And our BAP bags. Yeah. And I can't, oh, I first, we kind of first connected with Becky because we're both stitching Peacock Uniform Badger. And I think we can't quite take a sip unless we also say, hi, Ron. Is that her neighbor? That's her neighbor. And they have the game if whenever she says Ron, whatever beverage you're drinking, most people are drinking like tea, you got to take a sip. Okay. Funny. Anna. I'm just what gonna move, I'm just going to move my back bag over. It feels really good. It that does. Foam that foam. There. I, I have a new bat that's going in here, and I'll tell you once we once get to that. Um, Anna, what do you happen to be wearing today? I'm wearing something that I just put on at Carolyn's. It's like I said, it's chilly, and I, and I was I was just going through all the options of garments that I've made. I'm like too cold, too cold, too cold, too cold, too cold, too cold. I'm wearing something of Carolyn's. What am I wearing, Carolyn? You are wearing the ranunculus sweater. It, unfortunately. For me, it looked really good on Anna, so I was like, oh, if I'm nicer, I would give it to you. I'm not going to. We don't really look that good together, our colors. It's okay. That's all right. So you're wearing the ranunculus. It's knit with a strand of fingering weight and a strand of mohair. So it's really open, but the mohair just feels. tends to fill in the sort of the holes. I like how light and floaty it feels. It's a good, on your taller frame, it's a good, it hits at a good level. Looks really, looks really good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you can ask me what I'm wearing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carolyn, what are you wearing? All right, I'm wearing the Natsumi sweater designed by Yoko Hata, and she designed this originally for Brooklyn Tweed. And it's an interesting sweater. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, because it's knit side to side. So you cast on for the arms, work across the sweater body, and then back down and this to the other side. And makes that. Mm hmm I'll tell you about that stripe in a minute. And it has a high-low hem to it. Um, I knit the sweater. I finished it in 2016. Mm. It's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's knit with a yarn called Flock from A Verb for Keeping Warm. A Verb for Keeping Warm is a store we've talked about a lot. It's in Oakland, and they do all, they're really natural dyeing experts. And the owner, Christine, she's also really into just wool and sustainability. And she found all of this wool that was kind of being discarded in California and she collected it all up. It was this whole adventure. She has a whole write up about it and ended up sp sending it to Green Mountain Spinnery to spin in Vermont and then she naturally dyed it. But a couple, I have, there are a couple quotes that she said that I really liked and she said um, that she called this yarn flock um, and she says, quote, uh, which indicates that we combined either fleece from various farms and or fleece from various types of sheep. So they're getting it and combining it. And then she said, quote, um, one of the most compelling parts of this yarn is the way the natural brown to silver wool appears every so often, almost like a gray vein running through white granite. Mm -hmm. As a natural dyer, I adore over dyeing natural colored fleece because of the depth and nuance it adds to naturally dyed color. So that was one thing I liked she about really the, described that well. Mm -hmm, is you can see very very often that would have been a darker patch of this combined wool, and it's in other various places as you're knitting. But I feel like knitting it this way, I think it's much better, more effective as a vertical stripe than if you had sort of this I think horizontal so too. stripe coming across. So this, did you do that intentionally, or that was just a happy? Uh, well, that was so long ago. Let's ask Carol. I, it was probably a happy. It was probably happy. Like a happy I, surprise. I may not have realized about that when I had saw the yarn in the skein. Um, and I love the sweater. And in fact, I was even thinking I need a new summer like linen sweater. 
I think this could also be good if I just cropped it a little bit, this pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Okay, some fully finished objects. So we had the adventure of sending off our first cross-stitch pieces to be framed. Mm -hmm. And we sent them to L&M Framing Mm -hmm. and we had a fantastic experience. Mm -hmm. So, so friendly. We received texts of some possibilities of framings and then we chose. Everything mm -hmm. was just timely and clear and it was just fun. Mm -hmm. So the pieces that we sent were Kathy Barrick's Frederick and Frederica, which are pieces that we have made for our mother and they are going to hang in our family farm in Delaware. And here they are. So we chose a pretty simple black frame that has some graining in it that's a little bit hard to see. There we go, I think you can see it a bit. Uh huh. There. Yeah. And we went for the, well, there's a little bit of a glare. There, it, we, they have museum glass in them and I cannot believe, when they, they've been sitting on my sideboard they look most of the time like there is no glass in mm -hmm. them. It is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be hung someplace where it could potentially be dusty. And, yes. and, and we're hoping they're gonna hang there for a very long time. This farm has been in our family since 1685 or something like that. And it's only the second house, so it's been around. And uh, so we just, our mom has Pennsylvania Dutch heritage. She's 100% Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, so we like this fractal design. I personalized it with her birth year and Anna personalized it with her initials. So, and here I'm gonna put the L&M framing and they did a beautiful, beautiful job. Hopefully you can see that. We'll also, I'll help put it along here at the bottom so you can see it. Yeah. I it, <laughs> Anna, Anna was the spearheader. She's like, she did it. She print, they have a form. Let's do it, on. let's She's try like, it. Let's try it. Give me Frederick. We're sending it off. And did you just put it in a mailing envelope? Did you? you know how did I you did? send oh, it? They recommend. Uh, there's a like you said. There's a form you fill out, and they recommend putting it within plastic in case mm -hmm. I guess the package gets mm -hmm. wet. Uh, the United States Postal Service has these rectangular prism tubes, so like kind oh. of like a poster tube that come in three sizes. Oh. And I've found just rolling it up, putting it into plastic bags and slipping into that tube okay. worked really, really well. Okay, and there, at least compared to our pricing that we had gotten here in the Bay Area, which I, it, everything here is super, super expensive, it was completely reasonable. So <laughs> we're, we're both feeling like we would like to send a few pieces a year mm -hmm. maybe to mm -hmm. L&M, and mm -hmm. then it'd be kind of fun to, to decide what, what am I gonna send out? Exactly, exactly. We're really, really happy and pleased. When the, when the package arrived, I texted Carolyn, get over get here over now. Here. I mean, it was just, the whole thing was a great experience and we're super happy about it. So we're gonna, just, we're gonna look at them for a little bit. We're gonna have dinner with our mom and dad tonight. So I, I really wanna get a picture of us hang, holding these with mom before we send them off mm -hmm. um, to where they're going. So I'm so proud of us. <laughs> yes, and thank you. Kathy, yeah. Hashtag Kathy Barrick Fan Club. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, I think these are under, carriage house samplings. I think it, that it, the designer, but it, they it, are. it is, it's their Kathy's design. And the MPI okay. silk. And, and, yeah, MPI and those silk. beautiful autumnal tones. And we both stitched it on Pemberley 32 count linen with the call for MPI silks. And we did one over two. Right, I mean, it's, I still like the look of it. Oh yeah. Um, but I would, I, would, I would use 36. I would probably use 36 today. again too, but I love it. All right, I'm gonna very gently okay. put on the iron. Yeah, let's do it at the same time. So if we wiggle, we wiggle. A little bit of wiggle. <laughs> okay. All right, so Carolyn has some other finishes as well. I have, Fully another, I have another FFO. I have it face down, so I can't see it. I haven't seen it yet. It's Pretty Bird. And what I did for this one is I ordered a frame from Signed and Numbered, and I wanted to try a colored frame. Turn it over already. Okay, All right. no, okay so no, let me, I'll show it. Is that a half inch margin? What did you put in there? It's about a, uh, it is about a half inch. It is about a half inch. So signed in number, they were mm. fantastic to work with. Couple things is 
you know, ordering a color online can be a little dicey, but this is really representative of what the photo was. I really wanted to pull out that um, burgundy that is they in work the floss. Great together. Um, I should also just say, this is a design by the Artsy Housewife and it's stitched on 36 count Tefra by Cedar River Linen Design. And the thread is Roxy Flosco, their conversion. So highly recommend. All of those people, <laughs> Artsy Housewife, Jody at Cedar River Linen and Carrie at Roxy Floss. I cannot say such admiration for such everybody. Such admiration. So this piece to me just puts together the talents and creativity of those three women, and it just mm -hmm. means a lot. It means a lot. Um, the count it's ninety stitches wide by one fifty eight high. So I wanted to go for the colored frame, and I wanted to frame it myself. There's no glass. I like the I like the intimacy of being of just being able to kind of still touch. Mm -hmm. your fiber for that. It looks great. Um, Find and Numbered has a lot of choices. This is their Pee Wee frame and the color is wine. I, I do think it looks really good with the conversion. They, even though they have lots of set frames, you can just email them and ask for a custom frame. And what you do is you give them the exact viewing space that you want and then they add the appropriate margins to account for the lip that's inside the frame. So I think that is great. One of my questions is when you do that, how do you know how big to make the board you lace on? Well, so that's, that it fits they, in? They, I don't, they do that. So each frame comes with, since this is a thinner profile frame, it came with um, a piece of acid-free mat board already cut and inside so the you frame. wait until you get the frame i and wait until i get you... it okay. so what i did for my process and i'm a little bit um i probably many steps i first stitched a basting around what i wanted my visible margin to be and then i could measure really well off of that mm. and then once i got my board from them i stitched another more margin around that i use when i'm doing my lacing so the one thing that, that I'm going to have... Why would you need to do another stitch? Because the um, the first basting is the visible, but your mat board is going to be about... Of course. Uh, it's going to be larger than that. And I really like having that basting stitch to see it along the edge as I'm lacing. I feel like it's, it helps um, me a lot as a guidepost. So the one thing I did, and I have to kind of tweak this, is the mat board, and I have another frame I'm going to do that has, it's bigger, so this foam core, it fits really snug into the frame. So I was worried because of wrapping the linen. Yeah. I did not want that. So I cut some off of the mat board. Just like a smidge, like a little. Mm -hmm. And I cut off a little bit. Um, it, it was a little bit loose when I put it in it, but once I put this board down and tacked it down, I think it really held it in place. Um, Do I hold it for a sec? Yes. Uh, I feel like they were really easy to work with. It does take a while, like, especially the custom frames. Once I put my order in, I think they say it takes two to three weeks to actually make them mm -hmm. and send it to you. but totally fine. It was a completely reasonable price. Let's just add a third red between our sweaters. I know. <laughs> I know. It, 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 it's fabulous. Thank you. Anna. And again, it's just, we're very interested in options mm -hmm. where we do most of the labor mm -hmm. to keep down the price. Yeah. I'm guessing I've, I ordered two frames. The, uh, the next one, I'll wow. hopefully have it done for the next one. It's for my Reverend Gordon squash bottom and it's a little bit bigger frame. I think the two frames with shipping was a, were about $70. So I felt like that was really reasonable. And then they also gave me a coupon for the next time. Um, so again. Now, do you know where you're gonna put that? I don't. Give it I to don't. mom. <laughs> All the no, Pennsylvania I, Dutch looking I'm, things. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not giving this one away. Just again, the women that designed it, I think it's one of my favorite designs I've ever seen. I love stitching it. Maybe put it behind your stitching chair. Maybe. Is there a wall there? Oh, it's orange. Yeah, my stitching chair is orange. Yeah, and it's also thin. It can prop up. You know, I can lean it against things. I'll have, I have to see. I have a bunch of birds. Maybe I'm going to start a bird wall because I have the Satsuma Street one that mm. I framed too that's a bird. So, All right, so Anna was a little unsure about colored frames. Just what's in it. You won't hurt my feelings. What do you mm -hmm. think about the colored frame? Love it. I think it looks a because I think it looks a little bit more natural than I was anticipating. Mm -hmm. I was a little, I, I think my concern with a color frame sometimes is it can be a little, I can be, I can, frames can feel distracting to mm -hmm. me, which is one of the reasons I think mm -hmm. I like the tile so much. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, is working beautifully. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty common pattern for Carolyn to try something before me and then yeah. she, <laughs> like, oh yeah, I like that too. Um, I also did put a, a layer of quilt batting. 
So I was going to ask yeah, you that. I did okay. do that. And I'm finding I really, I like that. It, I feel like it softens the time. I did not do that when I laced something on foam core. It felt a little too hard. And I feel like this gives just, just a little bit of softness. I agree. Um, to it. Okay. I'm probably showing it enough. But then I was like, ooh, even like, look how pretty these look like together. And just, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get enough fully finished cross stitch pieces that I'm finding I can sort of layer them or put, mix them together and it's starting to be really fun. Great. Really fun. Okay. I probably talked enough about that, but. It's hard to stop talking when you have such a good experience. I know. It's, it's. All right. So now you have some finished objects as I well. I have some finished objects. Three, I think. Yes. Yeah. I have three finished objects. So, and um, I think we're going to call this video um, a flock of finishes because there's so many birds involved. So I finished. And you talked about the flock in the, in oh, the yard. Oh, this is called flock too? Mm -hmm. I never thought about that. Uh, this is Peace on Earth by Lottie Da, and this is my New Year's Day start, and I'm finished. Here it is. Oh, I'll show you in the first. I think it's a very beautiful piece to have as your New Year's It was a start. perfect New Year's start. So this again was designed by Lottie Da. It's on linen, it's 38 count Himalayan fog by Legacy Linen. And it's stitched using SWA 103. And I did my own conversion off of the DMC, but I added and I changed a few things. Like for example, those up there would have been this sandy color over here. Um, I made the alphabet two-toned. I just did a few, a few different things um, to personalize it. And here are the, silks I used. I was like looking at the And lines. as I said before, I'm keeping them together because this palette needs another project. I, I will do something else with that palette. I feel like well. it, it just feels really gentle to me, which mm -hmm. matches the words. Mm -hmm. I know you don't often stitch words. Mm -hmm. Just really, really well chosen, the colors. When I finished it, I actually felt very peaceful. Mm. It just like the whole thing from beginning to end. She had put initials here, but since it was my New Year's start, I put the year. And then my initial CQS, I did, instead of the blue, I did it in the sand color. It might not be visible on camera. So this, I'm gonna finish this one as a tile, and I'm gonna put fabric on the back. And I was actually thinking, this is some leftovers from a bag I made that actually Anna has. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about using one of those because they have that dusty, teal in there and, and also some gray. So a lot of figures. So I'm thinking about that. And I feel like both of these fabrics just kind of look peaceful also. Yeah. So this piece, when I look no further, when I go through the process of um, finishing it, I'll, I'll do the tutorial for this one. And I'm going to do this one. This oh, for the, okay. For the lacing. For the, the, for the lacing. And this one, I'm also going to block because it's all silk. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll stitch my border around it. Then I'll block it and then I'll, I'll lace it. And then we'll make the, Let's the talk tile. because as you do it step by step, I might want to do one of my pieces step by step with you. Okay, that'd be, that would actually be really fun. Okay, Peace on Earth by Lottie Da, and I bought this pattern from Hillside Brookery. Beautiful, beautiful, Carolyn. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we have so much stuff here. All right. Oh, and, and the next one I had another finish. And this one, I, I stitched on this when I was traveling because it was on 28 count linen, and that really, I stitched on it at the airport. Um, did anybody say anything to you while you stitched? I can't remember. Okay. So I definitely, when I was knitting, people would say something. I know nobody really said anything to me. And this is my Pennsylvania Dutch marking sampler. So when she says her, she designed I designed this. this. And so here it is. I really like the yellow on the bottom. Yeah, I'm glad I added that in. I wish I had maybe incorporated a little bit of it up at the top, maybe in some of those motifs, but this, and the goal for this, and actually, Anna, can you hold that for a second? Mm -hmm. The goal of this is uh, where I'm gonna be stitching a sampler that goes, names all our matrilineal lines. So our mothers, 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 mothers. My husband traced us back nine generations from us and they're all Pennsylvania Dutch up to our generation. So what I did is I wanted to make this marking sampler to set my alphabet that I'm going to use. And what I did is I went to this book Samplers of Pennsylvania Germans. It is the reference book. Highly recommend. If you're at all interested, it is incredible. And what I did, it has sampler after sampler, some black and white, some color. So I went through the book and I just, what what's the most common alphabet? 
and they even talk about alphabets in here and there is actually one particular alphabet that they used on almost all their samplers. So I got my letters and my numbers from looking at the samplers in this book and kind of being like, okay, my A, there are like two or three variations, I'm gonna do that one. And then some of these motifs like this, um, all these like squares, there was this incredible, it'd be hard to see, quilt. And in the middle, let me see if I can point it out where my finger is, she has a band across the whole thing of that sort of style. Hmm. So I just went through and I also picked just a few motifs or things that were common. And those are just decorative elements and I'll probably be doing something similar when I do our matrilineal line. But it was really, and this one I'm gonna finish at using a hem stitch because I wanna really use it as a reference marking sample. I wanna right. have it there. And I think once I get going, I'll know the people's names and I'll just, I'm not sure I'm even gonna chart them all because I'll just be able to grab my letters from here as I as I go. We'll, we'll see once we get going for that. So I posted this on Instagram and just asked people if they had any recommendations for hem stitching. And several people mentioned Krista West and she has a video called Drawn Thread Hem Technique How To. And I'll link that here. I haven't watched it yet, but that was one several people said. I also brought this over. You can borrow this. There's a little section in this book on the oh, hem stitch. And good. I think this was recommended by somebody when I first started watching Floss Tube. Mm -hmm. um, and I bought it on the secondary market. Oh, good, Anna. So it has some diagrams. I feel like we either talked about this or heard about it when we first started because I feel like there was another book or other references that people had. Um, so if you have any recommendation, let me know. And as when I start doing this hem stitch, I'll, I'll list my recommendations and we'll put together a little resor resources um, that what we have. And this is also something I wanna finish sooner than later because I really wanna have this done to um, get going on that big sampling for that. Mm -hmm. Now, Anna, do you have a feeling, and I almost wanna ask Susan Stanley, would they line the back of these? Or was your marking sampler, did you just see your back? You know, do you just hem stitch it and that's it? That's yeah. what my gut tells me because I, when we think about like a hand towel or something, I think that was just done Okay, and you could see the back. Yeah. If anybody knows, do you line this at all or is it just hem stitch? I think you do, probably just hem stitch it and you see the back and then I think you would roll it. Although I feel like I've seen some, maybe some are finished instead of hem stitch as just almost like a fabric quilt, like they'd have this. It's like almost like an unstuffed pillow. I bet you we can find the answer to okay. that. Okay, so that, that's something I'll kind of look, look into, into that a little too. bit. But it, it does make, I do really want to learn the hem stitch and this seem like the perfect piece because also 28 count, so I should be able to mm -hmm. see it easily. Right. So great. It's great when I designed it, my original design. I had a three there. <laughs> that was <laughs> funny. You, whoops. But the nice thing is I'm like, my four is sitting there, right there. That's right, you just pluck off a I four. I just pluck off a four and I could just look at it and stitch it. All right. I just think the whole, your whole idea is great. This is your, your first your first step, which is a fabulous mm -hmm. step to. Right. Is this? Did you learn how to use Mac Stitch mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. designed that one? Too? This is a, so you, I think this is a. You know what? I might have done Yaya Sampler. I can't remember if I mm. did this one first or Yaya Sampler on Mac Stitch, but this I used Mac Stitch for this. It was great. Oh, I should also say this is stitched on. 28 count platinum by Zweigart. And I gotta say, it doesn't have the greatest feel. It's like a little stiff. And then I used a variety, I wanted to use wool of Bell, uh, Bella Lusa Merino Wools. Which is what our LNS care, mm -hmm. they have a drawer of, mm -hmm. of it. I don't know how it compares to other wools. They have actually quite a few different wools there. I'm not gonna stitch our large sampler on wool, but I just wanted to try wool and this seemed like the perfect mm -hmm. time. And I wanted these to be a little bit bigger. So as I'm looking at the alphabet letters, I'm not like, where are the stitches? I really wanted to be able to see them. Okay. Okay, one more. I'm good. <laughs> Clogging it up. All right. All right. The last um, finish, it's almost finished. I have to sew buttons on, is um, mm. a project that I was working on when I was traveling. I love knitting sweaters. Uh, there's this great pattern that I think Joan, Anna, I've knit four of them. It's called the Baby Ky Kylie sweater. It's a yoke, three buttons. It's perfect for kids. It's fantastic, but my older grand girls have sized out of it. So I was looking for another yoke cardigan and found this pattern. It's called Anchors Jacket, and it also has a yoke design, and it's a cardigan. 
There's something about this style sweater. I feel like it. You, the kids can wear them when they're big and they can wear them when they're a little small and the sleeves are up to here. Yeah. So they can really get good use out of it. A funny story, uh, the girls in, in New York, they wear those um, cardigans like every day. And it's also, they use it as an underlayer under their coat mm. when it gets really cold and just it's easy to put on. because see that. Guns. So I had made the older one a sweater and then she kind of grew out of it. But then I also made the younger one a sweater but it can't turn out a little bit bigger. And I think the parents didn't realize it was actually for the younger one. And so the older one has been wearing it, but it's still same thing. It's super cute. Her sleeves are a little shorter and it'll just get passed down. So that's why I wanted another one. All right. So the funny story about this is I needed buttons. Oh, I should say about the yarn. This so yarn cute. is, um, the design is by Petite Knit. She's a very popular designer. And the yarn is Sueño by Hiku. And the colorway is silver sage and it's it's 80 percent mm -hmm. merino wool and 20 percent bamboo and i bought this yarn at they live in a little town called beacon it has a fantastic little main st street and on there is a like sewing knitting embroidery um, store it's really really nice i had bought that yarn there when i was visiting a couple of years ago i'm like come on carolyn make something out of it so i felt like it was a good time to pull that out and i made the sweater and i loved it so much i got another colorway oh the colors are beautiful. aren't they beautiful and this i started another one for my younger granddaughter that's here locally and here's her card it's gonna look so you know cute. it's kind of fun okay this is the design is to have it look like that on the outside but i loved the design on the inside mm. so um for this one i just turned it around and i'm making the outside be the inside i like that pearl bump you get there along the way so we'll see that on progress but i just as soon as I finished that, I just walked back down to the store, got two more skeins, and this granddaughter has is a redhead, so it, that look is going to look really cute on her. Last thing is this granddaughter, who the sweater was for the recipient, she really like liked it, and she was like invested. She watched me knit it, and she was willing. She'd try it on. We were testing the sleeves, and she liked the feel of it, so I'm like, okay, let's keep her involved with the project. I'm like, let's take her to pick buttons. So we go. We go to the store. And you can she, guess what's coming. And she instantly goes, oh, I love these pink mm -hmm. buttons. But then she goes, oh, look at these purple buttons. Okay, so, you know, neither of which really goes with the sweater. And then she goes, hey, Gramsy, what if I do a pattern? So we will be doing a pink, then a purple, then a pink, then a purple, etc. Mm -hmm. button. Perfect. And valuable lesson learned. Do not ask a child or a recipient to pick unless you are ready to be 100% all in. Because and thank you for doing that. It, I had to talk to myself because I had actually already picked buttons before, but she was so into it. I'm like, you know, let's pick some more buttons. And I had picked these very tasteful, like, whitish And she would have looked at them like, Mm. Yeah, whatever. And so, and then afterwards, after she picked them, I'm like, would she notice if I put on the other ones? I'm like, no. You asked her. That's what she wants. And what they're buttons. Doing? And they're buttons. Absolutely. But I did tell my daughter-in-law, I'm like, when this is ready for the younger daughter to wear, if you prefer the other buttons, I will change buttons <laughs> for you. Okay. So Great. That's a great story. Anchor's jacket. So time for our works in progress. Let's do works in progress. I'm gonna do mine sort of in the order of um, that I worked on since our last video. First is Scarlet Berries, which was my New Year's start. Scarlet Berries by the Scarlet House. Get that out. Here it is. And I'm stitching mine on 36 count cocoa by Weeks Dye Works with the Call for Over Dyed Cottons by Weeks Dye Works. One over two. And I moved on. I was doing the motifs down at the bottom last time I showed this. I moved in towards the center and been working on that big tree in the center. Wow. And then when I was on vacation, as I mentioned, I learned how to use Mac Stitch. So I have charted out, as Carolyn referenced, we have our matrilineal line back to many generations. So I've charted out the initials of all of those women. And they're equally spaced because they you change color with every initial. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm gonna get my board. I'm gonna put this on board. 
The colors on the model on this and the colors in the chart are different in a couple of different ways. And certainly in the initials, because you, this is designed to put initials that mean something to you. So I'm just kind of picking colors as I go. And it's been fun. Anna, this looks fantastic. Thank you, I'm really happy Those with Those motifs, that little diamond and your peak, you hadn't done your peacock before, I think right? I was partway done. Oh, it looks so good. So I'm not tired of this at all. I think, I think I'm gonna just kind of keep working on it every month and I imagine I'll be finished maybe halfway through the year. And it might be my next thing I send to L&M Framing. <laughs> it's so good. Was this the call? I can't remember. Is this the call for linen or did you pick it? It is the call for linen. It looks, the colors on it looks so good. I agree. Okay, so you, is there anything that you, you still have yeah, a few more well, alphabet? And that goes on, but I think yeah. I'm going to put the my four sisters, including Carolyn. I think I'm oh. going to put the four sisters initials up there. Yes. And, and same thing, you could do them each in a different color. Something like that. And there's some motifs that I left off at the bottom here because there's two little crowns here and here. I think I'm going to put 20, 24. Oh, so, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. This is so successful. I love the colors. I'm really enjoying it. A, a commenter said, or maybe it was someone on Instagram said, yeah, I was waiting for you to say something about the difference in color in the the model in the front and the chart. And to me, I think you just can't lose. I know it's kind of hard when something surprises you. It surprised me. I was like, wait a minute, that's a different color than on the model. But I like I like them both, like six one way, half dozen the other. So I'm I'm using mostly the colors on the chart for mm -hmm. the motif section, Yeah, not on the model. Oh, right, because I guess you could, yeah. I, I would use what's on the chart because I think that's probably, I'm, we talked about this last time that probably the designer, maybe when she saw the model stitch was like, mm, I want to tweak a few things. It could be either way, but that's what I'm going for. And I'm happy. I know. I put okay. in a few of those little animals. They're cute. Oh, was it not on there? No, that, not last time I showed it. Oh, okay. It's like this tiny, 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 tiny little bird. I like the little bunny by the tree too. This little bunny. <laughs> this has been a fun sampler to work on. Really enjoying it. Okay. Scarlet berries. Really good. And this is the first time I've stitched this alphabet that has a group of, of four squares mm -hmm. for every chunk. They, and it's been fun. It, it actually, Oops, that's upside down. they talk about that in the Pennsylvania Dutch book. Mm -hmm. And what they do is that's how they would enlarge an alphabet is they would take a single X and turn it into a square. Oh, I think you said square. that before. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. Yes. So there we go, scarlet berries. Nice, Anna. All right, my next work in progress. In fact, a lot of my, I only have two works in progress because I fin I was finishing some things. Right. It's great. Now my yearly focus is Fruits of Plenty and I would, big goals. I would love to finish it in 2024. And so in January, I only stitched two days on and I'm like, okay, come on, keep going. And I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stitch all the infrastructure and then I can fill in different areas. This is so interesting to me. I, uh, cause I think you kind of did that. You got down to the corner. Well, I did turn the corner, but that was like, oh, okay. I could not put this down. I stitched on it eight days in February. Wow. And I'm almost done with all of my infrastructure. I still have some at the bottom. That looks so cool, Caroline. And then also once I knew my final size, I cut my linen for three inch border oh, all the yes. way around. So I have less bulk and you know, zigzag the edges Oh my again. gosh, congratulations for getting to this point. That is really so neat looking. Now all of a sudden, can you hold that side? Yeah. Now, like I just have to finish up down here, but like I can then be like, I'm gonna fill in that triangle or I can fill in this space or this, and I don't need to worry, is it gonna match up? That Joan did something so similar. Good. Mm -hmm. And it, I got addicted again to it. it literally, I, I have, I've, I've been doing a focus week a focus whip every week and the one I did for this previous week I didn't touch it because every night I'm like I want to keep going on my fruits of plenty and I'm like girl if you have momentum um definitely keep going definitely every time I see your fabric it is just it is truly one of a kind and yeah. such a pretty color yeah. so this this fabric is just a white Zweigart that I indigo dyed based on instructions and materials from a verb for keeping warm the natural dye place I did this 
I guess we started it 2021, so it would have been December 2020. Mm -hmm. It was it's cold here, and you have to indigo dye when it's warm. So my husband has one of those sous vide things. It's like a wand that you put in water and you cook things in the water. So I had the sous vide wand in this big tub of water to keep the water at like 90 degrees. It was it was hilarious. I'll put pictures in at some point. Okay. You're going to finish it this year. I think I am going to finish it this year. That This momentum, it felt really good. And I'm going to keep going. Also, my um, I keep it in this beautiful bag mm -hmm. from Stacey Lorraine. And I realized this time my I'm using MPI 991BB, but it's really long. And I think before I was cutting it in half. But this time I didn't. So I have these nice long strands, especially for doing the infrastructure. Okay. So once it I wasn't get it started, getting fuzzy or anything. Mm -mm. Yeah, that good old MPI. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you nope. have not stitched with MPI silk, I highly recommend mm -hmm. it. So feels really good. So I did eight days in February. I'm just gonna keep on. It's amazing. Going. It, it, it's it's incredible how beautiful it looks even with the empty I space know. to just because you start the, to see, like you said the infrastructure. I love the word yeah, you're using. You see the design. And, and it also starts to be like not so big anymore because I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, I've got a nice big spot here, but that's almost like a, it, it feels more doable. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel infinite anymore. Yes. Yes. Okay. That is a, I, I don't struggle with it a lot, but I struggle with that every once in a while of like, oh my gosh, this is so big or oh my goodness, I have so much more to do. And then I'm like, don't think about that. Mm -hmm. Not just for this piece, but mm -hmm. for a few other things. Mm -hmm. So, fruits of plenty. Wow. I'm a little speechless. All right, what I brought to, on my trip, and I put about 50 X's in. <laughs> Good job. Ooh. Is, actually, I really, oh, is, one board. of the things I bought at Market last year. So, oh. a year ago. Marguerite Meadows, 1804 mm -hmm. by Jeanette Douglas Designs. And as Carolyn was just holding up her wool piece, I was like, I'm just gonna open up that, those wool drawers and pick some colors. So that's what I did. Mm. And here I am. This is on 28 count autumn gold by Lakeside. Mm. I'm using the Bella Lusa wool with a pretty large needle, 22 I think. Oh, you are? One strand over two threads. I did a little bit more on the alphabet and carrying this bottom border. But what I mostly did was played with the greens. There was this very light sort of gray green that was originally the stem on this. And it just was not showing up. So I'm trying this darker sort of olive green. And then I'm playing with the leaves on this because I think I'm gonna take out this light gray green and use either that, that, or the brown of the alphabet. So I, I would like your opinion of uh, the leaves on this one, if you like one better than the other. Let me pull out the wools. Okay, I, I like that you changed this to the dark. I like the gray green leaves on this. Oh, you do? I do. Here's, I the, do. here's, the, here's the gray green, and here is that bright green. Interesting. I do. And um, I think I didn't care for it as much over here because I feel like the stems are the, am I, is this branches, the branches, stems? I don't know. I, I want to see those lines. They're very linear. Mm -hmm. And whereas the leaves, I feel like they can be a little bit more. In fact, I find like the dark really distracting. I think it's uh, uh, jarring as well. Uh -huh. And uh, in fact, and same the with that. bright is sort of in, uh, in an opposite way, the same. It's funny because look at the chart, the, the sort of dark olive is in the center. I don't do not know why I started differently. Mm. I'm just kind of throwing colors up. Yeah. It really it looks really good. Okay, well, I'll stick with the... I think I want to stitch this one, too, when you're done. Sample snack. One yep. of my favorite categories of stitching. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a... What, is one of our bins of patterns called sample snack? It might be. Okay. It might be. We should we should look through that sometime on a video. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. I... Like I said, I barely ever... St I, I, I barely stitched at all. I was just... I was playing with children eating incredible food, going to lots of little outings and stuff and just having a grand old time. 
I really like the feel of wool. It feels really different to me. Mm -hmm. And the bigger, the bigger holes and that big, thick wool. And mm -hmm. it's a nice change of pace. Yeah, I'm enjoying this one. I like the 28 too. My, you know, like my eyes, I definitely need to wear readers to see the holes. And I, even when I'm doing 28, I need to wear readers. But it's, it's like, you don't even have to think about it. Whereas the other one, sometimes I have to like find it. Or when you're starting with like a pin stitch, it's just do, 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 do. So mm -hmm. much easier. I'm just going to hold up this bag too because... I get these bags at the container store and they have these really pretty zippers. Becky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a pink one. There's a gray blue one. Uh -huh. I like these bags. I, my next whip is also a new start. It was my leap day start. And mm -hmm. I'm definitely going with one where it's going to take me a long time to do. And I had everything ready to go, just waiting for the right time. And I'm doing the houses of Hawkwon Hollow by Carriage House Samplings, but it's a Kathy Barrick design under Carriage House Samplings. If we weren't calling this a flock of finishes, we would we should call this video infrastructure. Infrastructure, <laughs> I know, that was the other thing. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm using Call for MPI silks, this is Anna's, and I'm getting my silks a block at a time. So I'm starting, for me, it's the top right. So I'm starting with this block. I mean, look at these colors. So pretty. Look at those, the blues and the greens and the yellow greens and oh, I can just look at this all day. Um, what I decided- Look at that blue, because I've been looking at and, blues online. And then it was, oh, we were up at um, Needle in a Haystack, this is, a, this is several months ago, and I was trying to pick out a linen for this and Olivia B was there with us and she pulled out hers, she's stitching this too, and hers was on 40 count overcast overcast and I'm like that's it that's done Olivia I'm copying you so I ordered 36 count overcast and I thought I was going to need um, a half stitchers half because I thought it wasn't going to fit width wise but it did end up fitting width wise I ordered the half and so I have some good extra and I decided just to do the infrastructure first so I could also cut it to the size so I went all the way across. It's 369 stitches across, 278 down. Um, so that I knew my size and I, I wanted to definitely make sure I could fit it all the way across this, this side. I did that first. Did you cross every 10 stitches or how did you keep going? Okay. Yeah, so in fact, you can see it whenever I'm going horizontally, unless I have a reference, here's one. I cross every 10 stitches and then come back so I can count. Going down, I'm just I'm just counting, but I would like triple count, double count. Everything's lined up so far. And that's the same thing. I kind of want to just have all these squares done so I know all my counting is correct. Because also these are all 92 wide, but this is only 90 wide, this column. So mm. I just want to have all of that. You know, it's funny. Set. I've always maintained for myself that doing the design along with the border helps me keep count but you're finding this that you have enough cues that you're reassured that you you're correct yes oh yeah mm -hmm. because once i know i thought th there's a little space so i think that's 92 that's 92 so when i do my next legs of the square if they don't line up i'm off on yeah. one of those and then once i know one does i know okay all of these are going to line up mm -hmm. um so that's my goal is I'm going to first outline all 12 of the squares before I really kick in and start one. So I've done, I did a lot. I you did do a lot. I know. Because even thinking like, wait, that all, was two nights ago? Uh-huh. Two nights of stitching. It doesn't look like a lot, but even getting across here, you're like, that's 369 stitches to get mm -hmm. across there. I could not stop. I'd be like, okay, I'll do one more. I'd do one more. But again, I'm feeling like the infrastructure. Then I'm like, okay, I don't have to think about this as a big piece. I'm going to work on that block and just work. Not infinite. It's it's not infinite. All right. So I'm into, I'm on the Hawk Run Hollow bandwagon now. Whew. I know they're unbelievable. Gorgeous. All right, so my last work in progress is A Present for a Friend, 1862, which is being sold by Hobby House right now as a Hand Across the Sea sampler. Uh, I ordered the 40 count, The Cat's Whiskers by Tabby Cat. You'll see in a moment, it's a light blue linen. 
and I chose the SWA 103s. Wait, okay, so wait, so I missed this. Is this, was this, did you get this as a kit? Oh, it's I from Hobby it, House. I bought it as a kit, and you can only get it at Hobby House right now. And was it, was it the call for linen? Yes, I ordered the whole, the whole thing. I, yeah. It arrived on Wednesday. It was the day before. I was thinking of maybe doing a loop, leap year start, but I, this arrived the day before, and I just started it right away. Ah! Oh yeah, I know this one. <gasps> so I started in the middle and I'm so cavalier, you all, when I find the middle, I'm like, ah, fold, I'll fold, put a little pin there. And I think my middle is a little bit off. And I think there's pretty generous margins. Okay. I think I'm okay, but I might stitch down. I usually stitch, I'm, show, I'm showing the back. Maybe you want to put that one. I would normally stitch to the right. Katie Strack, and I haven't finished her latest video, but she said something about being drawn to a fox and rabbit sampler that she started. Mm. And that just really struck a chord with me. Of like, there are some things that I just see them and I'm like, I, I, want, I really want to stitch that. Mm -hmm. or, that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I saw the sampler and there was just something about it. I think that it's, it's playfulness mm -hmm. in both the mo motifs and the way that they're spaced. Some, I think it even says in the description here that it reminded Nicola of a child's drawing. Mm -hmm. I mean, even there's like a, like a stick figure mm -hmm. in here. It is a ton of fun so far. I am thinking my children went to a nursery school that is, was a cooperative nursery school and it was just a very, very wonderful place. And I ended up teaching there for a while as well. And I might personal, I might wipe out these letters down here and do something oh. about nursery school. Like, there were some catchphrases like "you can't say, you can't play." I might put, I might put some something about nursery school because that's a really important part of. Would my you life. ever just say like parents' nursery school and then the years that you were involved with it? Maybe. Yeah. Okay, and doesn't show us the the colors because doesn't oh, it just yes. have three colors. Yeah, I have to say, I, I wouldn't pick the two blues. If I was at the store, I would not pick the two blues to go together, but I think they look really interesting mm -hmm. together. They're they're almost, I mean, they're the same value in a lot of ways. They look almost to me like the same color, but just in different hues. Okay, 40 count. How are you finding the 40 count? No problem at all. Yeah. I really like the way the 103s are sitting. I think there's yeah. more of this in my life. Yeah. I would like to try a Sam. I guess this is a sampler, but I would like to try more 40 count with 100 trees. Yeah. It's a little bit slippery. It comes out of the eye of the needle sometimes for me. Mm -hmm. I like the 100 threes. I've, that my piece on earth was 103. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, it's funny. I, I, I love this design as well. I wasn't sure how I felt about it being just three colors. Mm -hmm. um, I, oh, so I'm digging I'll, that I'll part. Be, I'll be curious to see what it looks like once you're done. But same thing. It's very collage -y. Yes. Well, it's funny because blue and red are not like that. These are not colors I'm necessarily mm -hmm. drawn to, mm -hmm. but I, I like the limited, maybe it's because you, I'm looking at the design. Mm -hmm. so yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay. Did you say the size? It's um, no, I didn't. 316 yeah. wide and 277 high. So again, these are, we've, we've been picking some bigger things. Mm -hmm. No infrastructure on this one no for me to feel like it's not infinite. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that one has like a little motif finish, a little motif finish. It does. And I feel like that, this is what I, I'm going to stitch tonight. I, I'm, oh, the, that's nice chart. Uh, nice it's and big. really nice chart. Although it's, it's really this hard. This is the darker blue and that's the lighter blue. It's the same symbol. Sorry. That's the lighter blue and this is the darker blue. Oh, to me, the blues oh, look the, inverse. Oh, it's, I can't it's, really show the chart yet, but well, you can flash it. It's like, it's done in color, but the, and I'm wondering because this darker blue has the white X's in it and this lighter blue has the black. Uh, Is no. that making? Yeah, I'm sure that's affecting it. They almost look like the same color. I don't, yeah. You, you so know, we just, do it. It, it, I mean, it wouldn't even necessarily matter. I love how she does a centerfold. I think this is my first hands across the sea. Oh, bad. 
Yeah. So I'm curious who else out there yeah. is doing this. The only thing I have about booklets is when you have to connect a page, you have to then go to different pages. So you may find that you make a copy. like when You know what I already did at school yesterday? I, um, I scanned each page mm -hmm. and then I can print them out if I want to. Mm -hmm. If you need that. Print them out in. What I often do is literally tape things together and then I have these huge charts and then I fold them in. Mm -hmm. I like I, I like that. Mm -hmm. All right, Anna. Okay. Oh, there we I go. go. That's, my, that's my surprise. <laughs> On a leap day, I text her. I'm like, I'm starting leap day starter. You? She goes, yes. I'm like, what is it? No, I said I started one last night. Okay. Is it? And I said, what is it? I'm not going to tell you. It's a surprise. But it is fun. It is, that's like even like Pretty Bird. Like she knows I finished it because it's mm -hmm. in our show notes. But I, when she came, I had it face down. because, And I didn't tell you how much I'd done at Fruits of Plenty. Because it's fun to see. I, I like a little element of surprise. Yeah. I will admit. All right. Okay, we're at an hour. Ten. My gosh, we can chat, can't we? <laughs> we chat a lot in the beginning. But we haven't seen each other in three weeks. Sure. Really? Okay. Plans, Anna. What are your plans? Okay. I am participating in the Jacob Sleeper Cell. I am doing Marvel Knot, which is this one. And again, I'm gonna replace the words. I've been doing something really, mm. really fun for me. We've referenced this farm where, where our Kathy Barrick birds are going. I have really strong images of visiting the, that um, place as a child mm -hmm. so I've been starting to write down just some of the images like my grandfather would give us a dime for every bird we could identify little things like that and then I've just chosen some of those things and I'm going to do sort of like the stream of consciousness ah. of some of the images um, but I'm still I still haven't picked my colors or my linen so I'm hoping we have a little time to talk that after mm -hmm. we make our video marvel not can't wait and I need to get going back on my the fruits of plenty because I haven't touched it. And I've been doing two, I guess, twelve mm -hmm. strands a week. But I'm I'm not gonna try to catch up or anything mm -hmm. from my travels. I'm just gonna pull two two lengths. Yes, yeah. just start again March or this. Yeah, week. probably on Monday. I'll start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? Okay, so first I'm gonna participate in the Jacob Sleeper Cell, um, and I'm doing GBH 1857, which is this one. And. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start on March 10th, that's the day Carmen's gonna start, and I'm gonna be doing my own color conversion based on our stash of Roxy Floss Co. Floss, because um, I'm in the Floss Club and we got a lot, and so I'm gonna kinda do the same colors, but what I'm gonna do is I'm probably, I really like their two blues, I like tealy blues. I'm gonna pick my two blues and then kind of start with that as the, the beginning. I still have to pick my linen, T TBD. But that's, that's gonna be so fun. That'll be all ready to go. I think the 10th is next Sunday. So I'll start that. Uh, I'm also starting, I'm participating in a mystery knit along. I don't know, I, I maybe just saw it. The designer, her name is Alicia Plummer and she's calling it a patchwork. So you picked four colors of yarn and I think we get a clue every week and it goes on for many weeks so mm -hmm. I think hopefully it's just like a little bit at a time and it sounds like we're going to be like sort of patchworking a shawl together so when I was up in New York I went to this a yarn store in the next town only oh next town only, next town over called Cold Spring which is a really cute town they had a fantastic knitting store called the Endless Skein where said buttons were also picked and I wanted, when I visit, I like to pick yarns that I can't get at home. So this mm. yarn is called Hudson Highlands. It's naturally dyed yarn. And it ended up, when I was checking out, the woman that dyes this lives in that town. And she forages in the woods at the, up on the big oh, Beacon Mountain to get a lot of her dye stuffs. So my I, uh, my th four colors are... What, what yields that green? Um, oh, indigo. There's a variation on indigo. Mm. And then this lighter one. So here are my four colors that I'll be making that shawl out of. Okay. That's going to be fun to watch yeah. with you as you do it. Yeah. So that's the plan. That starts on my first clue comes on March 5th. So I'll have that going next time I see everybody. And I just want to keep my momentum going on my Fruits of Plenty. Yeah. Keep going on that. Okay. So share surprise. supplies. I popped into a little fabric store in my sister's neighborhood and just bought a couple of, well, first of all, we named our last video Charm Packs, but I had held up a mini Charm Pack. And so a lot of people 
made the distinction between a charm pack and so a mini charm pack. So a mini pack. charm pack is two, two and, and a half, half by two and a half. And, and these are five by five. five. So I picked up this charm pack, five by five, of, I actually have some of this fabric. I made it, made a project bag out of it. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, but I'm enamored by these yes. right now. And then I picked up some pairs of half yards to make project oh, bags. Oh, I love it. These each have a little metallic to them. These are bugs. Like that. This dragonfly fabric just like, oh, oh, so cool. And I got sort of a linen-y thing to pair with that. Oh, cute. And then some bunnies. I keep picking purple, which is not, I don't really usually do it. And then this fabric is really neat. It's just like these random letters and shapes. It's like symbols. Symbols, yeah. Oh, nice. It's fun thinking about making project bags because you can get half yards of coordinating fabrics. And who doesn't like picking two coordinating fabrics when right. you go into the fabric store? Right. So I was just walking. Nice. I was walking home one day and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll stop in the fabric <laughs> store. That's, that's my shirt spot. How about you? Um, um, I have the yarn. And then the only other thing I have is the Roxy Floss Co. for oh, yes. March. And let me start. These are, and I'm labeling them so I'll know. These were the Brights. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to show these. Good way. So some oranges and pinks and some purples. And these have more very, very variegation in them. I like was that just one. noticing that. Yeah. So this this is a little bit new for me for Roxy Flosco. The idea of that much variation. So that'll be kind of interesting. And then the neutrals, same thing. They have a lot of variation in them as well. These were the five neutrals. Yeah. So now we have, I have lots that we had from before. And now I have January, February, and March, 10 skeins for each. And I'm keeping them each on these little rings on a bigger ring. So now I'm ready. I'm going to go in and start picking my palette for my sleeper Jacob cell. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thumbs, thumbs up is cracking me up because <laughs> it got to be a joke. In Philadelphia, they have these beautiful gift shops that are just like no other store that we have in our town. And mm. I really, I, you may not know it about me, but stationary products are just <laughs> one of my things. And so I was just joking. Yeah, I'm dropping $25 here, $25 <laughs> there, picking up a stack of cards here. Anyway, sometimes our thumbs up are sort of philosophical or something today it's all three things. cute little things i bought materialism all right oh this little journal i just like something that's a smaller what size what kind of paper blank. okay i love on the back has like conversion tables these envelopes i mean that design it's just envelopes and there's just times when i want to give something to somebody or something it's and I just like having a stack of this kind of thing to reach from. Aren't those cool? Wait, those are envelopes? Those are just envelopes. It's a pack of envelopes. Like it. Yeah. And then this one is just a notepad, but I just liked the stripes of color. And that's from Library Design Company. I've never heard of it. Were these stores within walking distance? Okay. Uh, two of them were in walking distance and two were in downtown Philadelphia. Okay. And Joan, we, were, we were just laughing by the end. Was Joan off school when you were there? She took Friday off, oh, which was nice. wonderful. Good. We also had the um, the baby with us for some of the time. So one of us would would play with her, mm -hmm. the toddler Jay, and then the rest of us would be looking around all the cute stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds fun. All right. Your thumbs up. Okay. Carolyn. My thumbs up is I have a new iPhone. I can't show you the new iPhone because we're recording with it right now. But let me show you the state <laughs> of my old iPhone. So I'm one of those people, I love the feel of the iPhone and I do not want to put this in a hunky plastic case. But then I'm like, Apple is known for doing good design and beautiful design, but is it really good design if you can't use the product without having it in a case? That's mm -hmm. just throwing that out there. Um, so th this blue tape had been on for about a year and that, cause it had cracked and held it together, but I dropped it again when I was on my trip and it's like physically came out. So I put some green tape on that and I lost this, all of this was black, like when I turned it on and I was traveling. So I'm like, please just have my boarding pass. Get me on my plane. Or, please let me see Please this. let me What's be able to. What's it called? QR code. Yeah. Text John when I get home so he can come pick me up. Mm -hmm. So this, and this was like really old too. I realized it was maybe like five or six years old. So I got a new one and that's always fun to get some new technology. 
Um, the next one is my thumbs up is I'm just loving my current whips. It's funny, I've seen lots of beautiful market patterns of that new Jacob one, but I'm not feeling the urge to start in mm. new, which is kind of interesting. I mean, of course, I just started this leap day start and I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna start something nice. But it's just more like, I'm just, I go, oh, I, I kind of want to work on that one now. I kind of want to work on that one now. So I'm just loving my whips right now. That's a nice one. place to be. And the last thing that's got me to give thumbs up I'm in, the, I'm teaching sixth grade this year in a temporary location for just one year. It's a long story, but I can walk there. It's about mm, a little bit more than three quarters of a mile, but not quite a mile. It is fantastic. I love the walk. It's like perfect in the morning, gets you awake, gets you going and perfect coming back in the afternoon. And, mm -hmm. and now I'm realizing we're starting to start to think about, you know, next year, what am I teaching next year? All that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to walk to work anymore next year. But I, I mean, I can bike, but I really prefer walking over biking. Why? Um, biking, when it's cold in the morning, mm. it's so cold. It's like uncomfortably cold and like your eyes are watering. Because even in California, like in the winter, if it's clear, it can be like 35 or 36 degrees in the morning. And particularly like when I leave for school, it's typically the coldest point in the day. Whereas if you're walking, something about having your gloves and you can still be bundled up, I, I'm not cold. So that I think that's... <laughs> That's the big difference. Okay. So that's my those Before my we say up. goodbye, Becky, thanks again for the zippers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. So until next time, happy crafting and stay curious. Bye. See ya.